Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Happy New Year's everyone and welcome back to studio vlog number 11. Today I'll be showing you how I made these cute little clay planters all from home. Before we get started with any project, we have to plan, so I'm quickly sketching out my ideas to get a feel for what shapes I'll need later. One of my New Year's resolutions was to get more into pottery, and I'm so happy that Skillshare reached out to me about a collaboration because it's a platform I thoroughly enjoy and I literally pay for a yearly subscription myself. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives where you can take mini courses and learn new skills from real professionals. I'm in awe that I'm working with them because I actually found them last year through another YouTuber's recommendation. And the first class I took was Charlie Clement's Procreate and Animation class. And fun fact, the piece I made from that class was my first ever Instagram photo on my art account. Anyways, I was, I was inspired to watch a couple of courses on ceramics, pottery, and hand building techniques. And I thought I was ready to take on the challenge myself today. I'll link a couple of the courses I learned from down below, and the first thousand of my subscribers to click the link in the description get a free premium trial membership. And now that we have an idea of what we want to make, let's get started. I'm going to start off the first two projects with polymer clay and then work with air dry clay later. The brand I like to use is Sculpey. You're going to want to work the clay in your hands for a little bit to loosen it up and then after roll it out into a slab. The hanging air planner is the easiest out of all three projects and it basically consists of three rectangular pieces. So I rolled out my clay with anything I could find at home. Here I used a wine bottle but I later switched to a hydro flask so you could literally use anything. I used these two blocks on either side to make sure the thickness of the clay is even to about a quarter of an inch. Then you're going to cut out a piece that's about an inch wide. The length you start off your first piece at is really up to you. Mine is probably around 4 to 5 inches long. I rounded off the edges and then cut out a hole on each side so we could later string them together. You're going to repeat this process two more times. Each additional piece should be a little longer than the last so we could create that tiered rainbow effect. I didn't have enough white clay, so I'm using this terracotta color as well. The color really doesn't matter here because we're going to paint over it anyway later. And don't forget to smooth out those edges. I probably spend most of my time smoothing out the clay. It doesn't have to be perfect though because you could always sand it down after it's baked. We're going to set these aside for now and work on the cow planter. Again, you're going to roll out a slab so we could cut out the bottom section. I want this planter to have a wonky look and shape, so I'm cutting the base into a kind of a funky, organic shape. Now we're going to roll out the slab for the sides. It took me a couple of tries to cut a piece that is long enough, so I had to kind of fiddle around with the size of the base and make it a little smaller. I have to say cutting clay is so satisfying to me. It just looks so nice. It looks beautiful. A tip I do have here to get a straight line is to cut the clay with a ruler instead of just eyeballing it. I didn't have one at the time, but it's much easier and more precise to do so. Now that we have the base and the side, we want to connect them. There are many different types of hand building techniques and this was the one I was most familiar with. You're going to want to score the clay by making small marks at the places you want to connect. This really helps the clay bind together so it doesn't fall apart later. It was a little hard to do this with polymer clay versus air dry clay, but if you're patient and careful, it's not too bad. I'm going around and smoothing all the parts together and I'm glad I used two different colors here so I could really see how they're infusing together. And don't forget to combine the sides as well.
Then to reinforce those attached areas, I took a coiled piece of clay and attached it to where the base and sides are touching and then smoothed it out. Next, I just attached the four legs to the bottom using the same scoring technique. Now it's time to bake our clay to harden it. Follow the instructions on the clay you're using for proper baking times. Don't they just look beautiful? So we're gonna forget those for a second and now we're gonna make the hugging planters out of air dry clay. I do think this clay is easier to work with and sculpt with and it's most similar to the normal potter's clay. I want one larger base and one smaller base, so I just use a cup to make a circle and then I just cut it out with my little tool. Here we're doing the same technique by making the base and sides and connecting them. side I've combined a little bit of clay and water in a bowl to create a slip. Since the shape is just a circle it is way simpler to mend these two sides together and the slip really helps enforce those edges. I'm scoring the areas that will be connected and then smoothing those out. To make a smaller pot, I cut off a section of the circle so there's a straight edge where this can connect to the larger pot. Again, to reinforce the sides, I added a coil and blended all the clay together. Next, I took a wet sponge and smoothed all the sides. This part is very satisfying. And it really helped to have some kind of rotating device, although that's not needed. I wanted to add a face to this, so I took a small piece of clay and created a nose. We don't have to bake air dry clay, so I left it out to dry for 24 to 72 hours. Now that all our clay is baked and dried, we can paint. I used acrylic paint and Naposka paint markers for this. You're gonna wanna use a paint that isn't water-based so it won't wash out after drying. 
I really love this speckled ceramic effect, so to mimic this, I flicked paint on my pieces with my finger and a paintbrush. This kind of does make a mess, which is why I did it in a bathtub. My parents are gonna kill me if they see this. Black paint in a white tub, ooh. Also, this is optional, but you could always sand your pieces before painting them to create a smoother surface. After the paint has dried, I sprayed my pieces in a well-ventilated area with proper safety equipment, and then I left them outside to dry. Our pieces have now dried and they're ready to be used. To make the hanging planter, you need some sort of twine. I wanted to use jute twine, but the store I went to only had this cotton twine that wasn't thick enough. So I used three pieces so it would be able to be thick enough to work with. Basically, I threaded the string through and tied a knot below each piece so they would stay in place. Honestly, this is kind of hard for me to describe and explain, so it might just be best to watch what I'm doing here. Once it's done, it's ready to be hung and you could put small little trinkets on it. I think it would look really cute with an air plant or crystals. So before I went to my local plant nursery to find plants to fit in these pots, the one I went to had perfect tiny plants for these and the string of pearls looks so nice with the cow print and it kind of fits that funky messy vibe I was going for. So now the plant has a cute little home. They also had this amazing little butt plant, which is what I'm calling it. It fit perfectly in the teeny tiny pot and oh, it just looks so cute. I love it. I love it. So colorful and fun. Yeah. 